Hi everyone, this is my example application. It's tagged under Cypress example GitHub topic. And I've been using it in a couple of videos, a bunch of specs there. And I see that my GitHub action pipeline workflow is failing. I can click on the badge. I can see where it starts failing on this workflow. It's failing in this job. Let's see what's uh, Okay, so the spec that fails is invoke spec, and the command that fails is is its property tidy chat API doesn't exist on your subject. So this is invoke, and what do we do? In the video, like I've shown, we slow down for party library, and then we trying to get the property on the window object that this library creates. It's an object, and then we invoke a method. So the it's and every command in Cypress by default uses four seconds and we're slowing down per part of JavaScript by three seconds. So when it responds after three seconds, it probably downloads more things and creates an object and it probably doesn't do it all in one second. And that's why this times out. So I could fix it right now by trying a longer timeout, for example. But before I do that, I think it's time for us to set up a dashboard recording because right now we don't know if that's what really happens here. So here's how I set up Cypress dashboard. I open Cypress and I go to runs, connect to dashboard. I'm going to put it under my open source organization. And by default, the visibility of this project is private, but I want it to be public. I'll click setup. Now this record key will come in momentarily. Here it is. So I'm going to grab this value and I'm going to go back to my project under settings, under secrets, and I'll create new repository secret, paste the value, Cypress record key, add secret. Perfect. What else has just happened? Well, if I exit and I look at Cypress JSON, I see the project ID has been added by Cypress automatically. Now we need to actually set up Cypress to record. As you can see, I'm running my test using a reusable GitHub workflow. If you haven't seen it, look at my blog post. I have a blog post that describes how to do this. This is unbelievable. This technology for reusing workflows is just great. And I created a couple of workflows. So this workflow will check out files, install dependencies, cache Cypress, run the test, and finish. Okay, and then the deploy will uh, start running after the test. So I want to set up things to record. Let's look at Cypress workflows. What do I need to pass? So I have two workflows here. One is parallel, one is standard. For standard, I have all the different parameters and the secrets. And let's see an example. I think this is how we use it. So we'll say with and we'll say record true. We're trying to record results on Cypress dashboard and we need to pass the secrets. And this workflow takes record key and the value is the value of a name of a secret we just create in the repo. And I think that should be enough. Let's see. So add recording, push it back to the actions. Okay. So our job is running the reusable workflow standard. Okay, restore the cache, which is NPM modules and Cypress binary. It uses NPM CI, right? Cypress was cached. All these warnings don't matter. Okay, now I'm recording. This is how easy it is to use a reusable workflow which is built on top of Cypress GitHub action itself. Okay, so before, while it's running, I'll go to project settings. I will later create a new record key because you know this one, and this is sensitive information, so I don't want anyone recording to my project. Configure badges only on main. Let's do a test count as well. Copy, and let's add it to my readme file badge. Okay. Let's look at the results, latest runs. Okay, so as you can see, we have flake, right? So invoke open did not pa uh, 
passed before, now it passed. So the flaky tests right right now are not analyzed because we don't rerun a test that fails. So here's what I suggest uh, you do. You set up retries and in run mode, maybe one, run it one more time to see if it fails or not. Enable test retries. Okay, and then we'll push again and let's see one more time what happens. Okay, when you run just appeared, specs are running in this order from longest running to the fastest spec. Okay, now notice how it says opens the chat from the test code attempt one out of two, right, and save the screenshot. So this is what flake detection and test retries does. Look at this test, right? So if I look at specific things, it failed on the first attempt, right? And again, it failed with the same error. The object wasn't there. And then we reran it, so the screenshot. Notice the script is still loading, right? So the third party uh, library did not return in time. Maybe there was a network hiccup, maybe the server was busy, it failed. But on the second attempt, everything was fine. We can see uh, the whole test video. So fails in the first attempt. Uh, I should allocate a larger resource for videos cut off. Okay, so here's what we can do. We'll go into that specific test because if that's struggling, this is what we add timeout. Let's say 10 seconds, I think 10 seconds for this particular test is reasonable. Let's push the code and let's look at how it runs now. Okay, it's running again. If you look at the specs, again, it's running the longest running. Invoke open, okay. Now it's not flake anymore, it finished successfully. If we really want to confirm that this test is now reliable, we would use something like Cypress grab, for example, to burn the test and run it repeatedly. But in this case, I think it's fine, okay. So this is how you would record the test, use reusable GitHub workflows, using Cypress workflows that I created and easily confirm that the test pass and if some of them are flaky, collect that information and then tighten the test down.